now, we're just starting chapter six, right? Yeah, this is chapter six. Y'all should be seeing my PowerPoint. Okay. All right. You're going to do 6.1, 6.2, 7.1, 7 through 7.3. This is the shortest unit. It says 7.2. 7, 1 and 7, 2. Let me look yeah. right quick. Okay, yes. that's fine. I thought it was 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3. I'm nope. sorry. Let me look right quick and make sure. Make sure I'm reading it right. There's two syllabi. One is shortened and one is not. Let me look at the short one. I hope it I hope it does say 7.1 and 7.2. That's less to teach. Now the one I got says 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. Okay. It says example two only. Okay, so I'm not gonna do so. I'm, I'm gonna look at it to see. Okay, but 7.1 and 7.2. So you got four sections. All right, so here we go. Let's let's move on and let me show you what we're going to be dealing with in this section. I want you to write down uh, the random variable. Random variable is numerical measure of the outcome from a probability experiment. So its value is determined by chance. Random variables are denoted by using the letter X. Random variable is a numerical measure of the outcome from a probability experiment. So flipping a coin, landing on heads or tails, that's a random variable. So its, a, so its value is determined by chance. Random variables are denoted using letters such as X. I'm going to leave that up for a couple of seconds. Miss Dennis, you said somebody on Highway 24 passed away. Yeah. I didn't hear about that one. What happened? A wreck or what? Yes, car accident. Mm. Whereabouts it's, on 24? I don't know. They said somewhere where they're doing construction. They ran into the, someone hit them. It was a hit and run. Hit them and kept going. Wait a minute. I did hear something about that. I don't know where it was. I remember seeing it on uh, news. What's it called? Joe Knows. I Facebook. think the girl was like 20 years old. Yeah. Yep. Sorry to hear that. Does she work with you? Yes, sir. She's the one that relieves me every Monday to come to school. Oh, bless your heart. Okay. Sorry to hear that. All right. Next thing. A discrete random variable. What does discrete mean? Remember, discrete means something that is countable. So we're going to be dealing with just whole numbers for discrete random variable. Discrete means whole numbers. And usually these are going to be like events. Like what is the probability of the World Series going to three, four, or five games? Can you have three and a half games? No. The events are usually going to be whole numbers. Discrete, random variable, that kind of just says whole numbers. Can you have two and a half households? No. No. If you're doing a poll of who watches TV after nine o'clock, you can't say two and a half households. There's two households or 2,000 households or 5,000 households. You can't say two and a half. You can't say 5,000.25 households. So you don't have to draw the number line. All you got to do is just say discrete random variables are countable. 
no fractions or decimals for the events. And a continuous random variable includes what? Fractions, decimals, and whole numbers. Write that down. Continuous. Continuous means fractions, decimals, and whole numbers. Continuous ra random variables consist of fractions, decimals, and whole numbers. So your probabilities, that would include your probabilities, that would include, you know, uh, 2.6 seconds, the average of 2.6 miles per hour, uh, anything having to do with a decimal or a fraction. Okay, and we just talked about that. Continuous is measured. You can write these down. The number of light bulbs that burn out of a 10 light bulb, uh, room out in, of 10 light bulbs in the next year, okay? 10 is a whole number. You count light bulbs. You do not measure light bulbs. The number of leaves on a randomly selected oak tree, you count the number of leaves. But what about the length of time that you wait in line at the bank or in the drive through or a call to 911? That's continuous. Write down those three examples, please. Okay, you don't have to write it word for word, just write number of light bulbs in a room, discrete. Number of leaves on a tree, discrete. Length of time where you have to wait, continuous. Because time, meters, liters, grams, all of that is what? Counted or measured? Measured. Measured. So you put the length of time put out there measured. Anything measured is continuous. Anything counted is discrete. And if you don't think time is measured, have five people meet at the courthouse. Will everybody show up at the same time? Yes or no? No. No, no they will not. You might have one or two show up at the same time, but well, there will always be one person that shows up what? Late. And there'll always be one person that shows up on the other end, which is what? Early. Early. And then the other three or four will fall into place. That's measured because if it was counted, how many eggs are in the refrigerator? If I send five people in the kitchen and tell them to count the number of eggs in the refrigerator, Will all of them be the same? Yes, that's the difference between counting and measured. We went over that in chapter one. A probability distribution. All right, here it is. That's a probability distribution, write it down. This is what a test question is gonna look like. It's going to look like this right here. 
Now, somebody take out your calculator and add up those probabilities for me. Why some of y'all write it down, one or two of y'all actually add up those probabilities. This is called identify discrete probabilities? This is called a probability distribution. Okay. A probability distribution. Did you eat out at Wendy's this weekend, Mr. Dennis? I didn't eat anything this weekend. You didn't eat anything? Oh my gosh, Miss Dennis. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn you into DSS. <laughs> You need to go over there at Wendy's and get you something to eat. Mm -mm. Although I had a good sleep because they well, finally good. turned off that damn light. Okay. Listen, I got three good neighbors. I got the Anderson City sewer plant to the left of our farm. I've got Michelin and First Quality across the creek from our farm. And then I have my aunt and uncle, they on the right side of the farm. So I got three good neighbors. That way nobody ever will move out my way. <laughs> okay. So what do you do with the probability distribution? Well, first you got to test it. All right, this is actual test question right here. They will, they will give you this right here and they will say, test it. Here are the two tests. One, all the probabilities added up has to equal what? One. And each probability has to be between what? Zero and one? Zero yes, ma'am. Good one. job. So write those two however you want to write them. The probabilities must add up to equal one. That's what that says. The probabilities must add up to equal one. And each probability should be between zero and one. And we talked about that in the last chapter. Remember that chart with one fourth and one fourth and one fourth and one fourth on it? They have to equal one. We talked about that. All right, now I'm going to give you some examples. And are the, all three of these test questions? Yes. Could you say for number two what that was again? I'm sorry. Each probability has to be between zero and one. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, I was going to, but they already going to give it to you. I thought it was going to be. All right, write this one down. Is this a probability distribution? And you would say no. Why? Because if you add up, I want somebody with a calculator, please, to add up the probabilities. The probabilities are on the right-hand side, right here. This is the event. Zero games, one game. What is the probability that the World Series will go to zero games, one game, two games, three games, four games, or five games? or something like that. What is the probability that a couple will have zero children, one child, one child, two children, three children, four children, five children? This is the event. X is the event. We talked about that with the first slide. The probability of that event is over here. So somebody add up all those numbers on the right. What do you get? 97 and that is not equal to a dollar 97 cents is not a dollar so this one is not a probability distribution 
there will be a question like this on the test and it will ask you, is this a probability distribution? And you either say yes or no. Give y'all a minute to give y'all a few more seconds to write that down. So it's not a proper probability distribution because all of the numbers on the right don't add up to one. It's got to equal one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Write this one down. Now this one is a dead giveaway. Why isn't this one a probability distribution? And everybody should zero in on that negative 0 0.01. Everybody in the class should go, wait a minute, that's not right. You can't have a probability of negative 0 0.01. So this one is a test question also. You might get one that says a negative or a five. Can you have a probability of five? No. So what if this, what if this 0.18, what if it was 1.8? No, you can't have a probability above one. So this one, you put a big red X through it and highlight the negative 0 0.01 because you cannot have a negative probability. Give y'all a couple more seconds. Okay, let me go ahead and tell everybody right now and write this down. We will not meet Wednesday. Write that down. I've got a appointment to take my mother to Wednesday morning. Bring her to and our class. What? Just bring it to the class. Yeah. <laughs> that no, that's Huber, not gonna happen. My mother Huber, will make you all cancel. she'll put you all in the laughing bin. <laughs> Hubert, you can't cancel class. We're gonna miss you. No, uh, listen. I guarantee you somebody will complain to my department head. Uh yes, uh Hubert didn't meet with us today. <laughs> <laughs> my salama. All right, but we are not meeting, so I need everybody to write that down. We are not meeting Wednesday. I don't feel like trying to. Uh, I, I wish that I could do a video, and but it would cause too much trouble, and then people say they wouldn't be able to see it, and they wouldn't be able to blah 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 blah. So I'm not. I'm not going to meet. So y'all will be able to work on 6.1 homework from now until Friday, okay? I want you to read 6.2, 7.1, and 7.2 also. All right, next one. Here is a perfect probability distribution. So write that one down. That is what a perfect probability distribution should look like. And I'm gonna say it one more time. This will be the third time I've said it. We will not meet Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to put it on each of the the team's uh, pages because there's going to be three or four students show up Wednesday in teams and I do need somebody if somebody from this class could log on and tell them because they're not going to read the message that I put on there. Priority one message so. coming in on secure channel. Well, Hubert, they'll see your recording today. No hell they won't. <laughs> they don't watch them. <laughs> I did those two virtual those two virtual office hours with all the homework questions. Two people watched it. So I don't want to hear any whining about you not being able to do the problems. I watched because, it. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. it. You're the one. I wonder who it was. So when you add up all these numbers, Hubert, it comes out to one? That's the way it's supposed to work. If it doesn't equal one, either you typed in something wrong or it's not a probability distribution. 
What if that number right here was 2.6? Well, that would not be a, because all these probabilities, each one has to be between zero and one. Or you wouldn't be able to get one after, if you add them all up. So it cannot be a negative. Can't have a negative over here. I, I, that's what I'm asking. I, I add you can't them up. have a positive one. above one. So the previous question, what was wrong with it? You had a negative number down there. Can't add that. And if you add all these up, you're not going to get one because that negative is going to screw it up. So this is the actual good guy right here. Now they're going to ask you to find the mean and the standard deviation of a probability distribution. Now this is not hard unless y'all make it hard. Okay, they should show the formula on the next couple of slides, I hope. Unless they go through Philadelphia lawyer talking and then we'll jump through all that. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide. And there, I'm not going to worry about you graphing. There it is. All right, write this down. Now, it looks all complicated, but it's not. Oh, write right. this down. To find the mean of a binomial or a, or a uh, probability distribution, to find the mean of a probability distribution, You multiply the event times the probability of the event, and you add them all up. So write that down. You take the event times the probability of the event, and you add them all up. The event times the probability of the event, and you add them all up. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make one up on my handy dandy Excel spreadsheet. Priority one message coming in on secured channel. And this is doing it by hand also. This is the way you would do it in your notebook. All right, so I'm going to make up a probability distribution. And this is what I want you working on in the homework. These are your test questions that I will give you and they will look like this. All right, I got X, which means an event. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So zero children, one children, one child, two children, three children, four children, five children. And what is the probability of those events? And this will be given to you. Probability of the event happening. And I'm going to put 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Let's see, that's 0 0.45, 55, 65, 0 0.1 or 0.25 and 1, 0.1. Now that should equal, let's check it, should equal 1. Yep. Okay, do we have any negatives? Nope. Do we have any numbers above one? No. Does it equal one when you add it up? Yes. Yeah. So this is a probability distribution. So write that down. This is what you'll be given on a test. And you will be asked, is this a probability distribution? And you just checked it right there. And it is a probability distribution. And you checked each one of these, and they are not negative or above one. And you added them up, and they equal one. So this is a probability distribution. Now, that's not hard. Can you move that Excel out my way? No. Please. Oh, you're such a diva. Thank you.
Did Mecca Gina okay. tell you she's going to be driving on the road? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Miss Mecca Gina thinks she's going to be driving on the road. I, I already have been. Uh-oh. I, I drove several places last week. She's going to end up in a ditch. <laughs> All right. So here is our titles. I'm going to put that bold and underlined. All right, there's my X. That's the event. And that's the probability of the event. Now, I'm going to take my handy dandy whiteboard. Why isn't it working? Come on. Oh, there it is. It's up here. Well, hold on a second. What the heck's the matter with this thing? There. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to go to get out the slide. All right. I'm gonna write down the formula, and I want you to read the formula because that's what I'm gonna tell you to do whenever you ask me how to do the problem. All right. So the mean of the probability distribution is equal to the summation of what? X times what? P. You just showed it to P of what? X. Okay, so the, prob the, the event times the probability of the event, and you add them all up. Now, I said that like six times. Okay, I hope, I hope I don't have to say it another six times. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit wider right here. And I don't know why it does that, but I don't, don't ask me. Let's see if I can hit undo there. All right, so right here, I'm going to type in X times what? P of X. And I'm going to take this first guy and I'm going to multiply it by this guy. That's all I'm going to do. Zero times one or point one is zero. All right, now you have to do that by hand. You should have five numbers. I'll tell you the first one, zero. The second one is point one. Y'all should be able to do them in your head. What's four quarters? A dollar. A dollar. What's three quarters? 75 cent. What's two times 20 cent? 40 cent. One times a dime is a dime. Five times 10 cent is what? 50 cent. You should be able to do that in your head unless you can't count money. And don't you dare say you can't count money because some of y'all are like very good with money. <laughs> some of y'all are cheap. Now, what am I going to do? I just did this right here. I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter and I just did this. X times what? P. P of X. The event times the probability of the event. Now what? Add everything together, you said? The formula says add them what? Together. Add them all up. There you go. And that is how you find the mean of standard, the mean of a probability distribution. Now I'm sorry, I can't do anything to make that easier. So what'd y'all get? I got 2.75. And I'm gonna highlight That's that green because that is what you're looking for. You're looking for the mean of the whatever, mean of the probability distribution.
I don't know why it won't. Anyway, there it is. 2.75. That's it. So that's a test question. So right, right now, there's two types of test questions you're going to get. One is going to be, is this a probability distribution? And you check for each one to see if it's negative or above one. And then you add them up and they should equal one. That's one question. The other question is find the mean of the binomial distribution. And there it is. I just did it. Those are two questions on the test. Two questions. All right. And that is the mean of a discrete random variable or the mean of a probability distribution. And there is another example right there. Now, I don't do it this way. I do it on the Excel spreadsheet. So if you want to do it that way, zero times this plus one times that plus two times that plus three times that plus four times that plus five times that, that's fine. The mean is 1.49. So if I were you, I would put this probability distribution in your notes and put mean is equal to 1.49 and do this at home to see if you get the 1.49. That's what I would do. So that way you'll have one that I showed you how to do it, and then you'll have one that you can do at home in your notes to make sure you know how to do it. Good idea. And nobody will do it. But Good like, idea. Just like nobody watches the videos, nobody sends me homework questions, and then they wonder why, and then I just... I just give up. From now on, I'm just going to start class and say, I'm Hubert. We'll start with 1.1. That's what <laughs> I'm going to start doing. All right, next. Interpretation of the mean. Well, I'm not going to get into a lot of interpretation of the mean. There's two ways to find the mean. How do you find the mean of your test grade? Somebody tell me. Add them all up. OK, that's what this slide is saying. You add up all the X's and divide by N. What's N? The number of things you're adding that's up? That's the number of tests. So if you got four tests, you add them up, and divide by four. So you all know that from seventh grade. OK, Hello. because I know that you were adding up your grades around the seventh or eighth grade is when you start worrying about them. That's when you started learning this rule right here. You add them all up and divide by what? N. Now that is what you call the standard mean. In other words, you took the mean, you took your add, you took your test grades, you added them up and you divided by N. That is called the standard mean. This right here is called the mean of the probability distribution. So there's two different means here. One, you do by test scores, that's the standard mean. And then there is the mean of the probability distribution. The difference between the standard mean and the binomial distribution mean gets closer to zero as n does what? Increases. That's the large number rule. The more numbers, the better. When you're talking about probability and statistics, the more numbers, the better. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this to me is a lot of wasted time. Okay, now this is a test question right here. I'm going to go ahead and put this. This is your third test question. Write this one down because you're going to see this. You will also see this one on a standardized test. So I want you to write it word for word. 
and copy down the little chart down here. I'm going to let y'all write for another few seconds. And I want you to highlight that last sentence in your notes. Compute the expected value of this policy to the who. That means I want y'all to say something. Oh, insurance, so insurance company. company. Insurance company. So this is from the view of the insurance company. Now, what does that mean? Well, why do you think they have a negative and a positive number down there? What does negative mean in business? Loss. Good job. And positive means what? A gain. Gain. So when you're talking about the insurance company, they're going to be looking at everything as negative and what? Positive. Uh, also, I want you to write down in red, if you got a red marker or highlighter, I want you to put mean, uh, put, put binomial, but put BD mean <laughs> is equal to expected value. BD mean, the binomial distribution, I'll write it up top, because I'm going to say it, and then everybody's going to say, what'd you say? B, it's not working. Great. Oh, just forget it. Okay, there it goes. Binomial distribution mean is equal to expected value. Expected value is just another word for what? The mean. So here is your binomial, here is your probability distribution. What the heck does all this mean? Well, what is the opposite of living? Death. Death. Okay, is there any in-between? No. no. Hell to the no. There's no in-between. <laughs> That's like being half pregnant. <laughs> you either dead or you alive, one of the two. All right? Uh, man 2021 has not screwed that up yet. Okay, you're either dead or you're alive. Okay, now give, give 2021, give us a little bit more time and we'll screw that up somehow, all right? But, but, but they're, you're either dead or alive. So what is the event? Death and non-death or being alive. So here is being alive. So if you survive the year, that means the insurance company brought in how much money? $530. Exactly. You paid them a premium 
of $530 and you wrote them a check. And since the insurance company is looking at this, that is money coming in because you survived. So the problem, the event is survival. This is survival. And this is death. Now, what happens if you die? People get paid. Then the beneficiary gets paid. So with the insurance company, what is that going to be? Is that going to be a gain or a loss? A loss. And that is why it's negative. Death. Alive. That's the event. Now, what is the probability of survival? 0.99 what? 791. And what's the complement of surviving? The same thing, 0 0.00209. It's the complement of surviving is death. So that's the probability of dying. And now you just do what you just did. You can take that, add, multiply by that. That negative 249, multiply by that, add them together. And this is the expected value. Now that means, and I'll shut up because it's time for class to be over. That means that the company is, is $7.50. Is that positive or negative? It's positive. positive. So that means, so what does that mean? Since $7.50 is positive, that means the insurance company is making money. Write that down. Because $7.50 is positive, that means the insurance company is making money. Their expected value is positive. Now, you've got three test questions to work on in 6.1 homework. One, is determine whether this is well you'll have some definitions in there the first five or six questions of 6.1 and 6.2 are going to be like definitions okay and then you'll have is this a random variable yes or no or a binomial distribution and you say yes or no then they're going to ask you to find the mean and then they're going to find the expected value that is pretty much and I want you to go ahead and write that one down. Write this one down right here. Write that one down right there. The standard deviation is equal to that right there. X minus P of X minus X times P, X squared times P of X minus the mean squared. That is how you find the standard deviation. And we'll go over that Friday. Now, for homework between now and Friday, I want y'all to read 6.1, 6.2, 7.1, 7.2. And I want you to work on the first few problems of 6.1 up to the standard deviation. When you see one that says find the standard deviation, I want you to stop because I haven't covered that. All right? Okay. Let's see what else is in this just right quick. Yeah, that's 6.1. I'm going to leave this on the board right here and let y'all look at it while y'all are leaving. Hold on, if I could get there. I'm going to leave this on the board for you to use. This is an example of how to find the mean or the standard deviation. I'm going to leave it on the recording so you can actually look at it if you want to watch it for those two or three people that wants to watch, you know, go over the video. So, okay. We are not meeting when? Friday. Wednesday. Wednesday. We're not meeting Wednesday. Wednesday. We are meeting again Friday. All right, I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna leave this up for a few more minutes while y'all are getting out of the class, and I will see y'all Friday. Okay. Okay.
Good luck with your mom's appointment. Oh, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get her committed. That's what I'm going to try to get her done. Try to put her in a, throw her in a nursing home is what I'm going to do. If she wants a private care, take a call me. Lord, she, you would quit. You would quit. <laughs> this woman, this woman, I have to go and check to make sure she ain't outside doing all kinds of crazy stuff. She, she's a hard working person and she's, she's 80 something years old and I'm having to pretty much take care of her. So, well, I don't have to take care of her. She takes care of herself, but it ain't like, it, it'd be just like her to go out and drive, you know, in a, in a hole because sometimes she forgets where all the holes are on the farm. And sometimes <laughs> she'll drive in a hole and I have to go pull her out and stuff like that. So anyway, y'all have a good day and I'll see y'all Friday. Okay. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. See y'all.